Welcome back to A Kentucky. Now, last week I sat down with UK basketball coach John Calipari for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. The first one since we started doing this show. And tonight, we'll show you part one. This is me and Cal. Take a look. Cal, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Good to see you again. I haven't talked to you in a while. It's been a while, that's right. You, uh, you're going into your 10th year. And I remember when you came here and I got to know you a little bit, you said, this is not the kind of job you can stay more than 10 years. You've recently talked about staying a lot longer than that. Has something changed? And when you came here, did you think you'd be here this long? Well, I thought I'd be here 10 years, but I didn't think that at the end of 10, I'm thinking like, I don't see any end in sight. And you know, it was funny, uh, Coach Hall is the one that whispered in my ear. I said, how long coach? And he looked around and he said, about 10 years. Yeah. So then I saw him the other day and he said, you put that in the paper. I said, you said it. And because he said I went a three, he said I went, he went three too many. But then he said, if they would have been paying me the same, I would have never retired. <laughs> I'm sure. But this, what, what happens here, the stage is so big and the opportunity to help kids and their families, the opportunity to have a say and be able to move people, to be in a seat that matters, um, the opportunity to do things in a community and really around the world from that seat. And I come back to if you're in that seat, you cheat the position if all you do is you're watching film. I mean, you, it's about being more than that. The thing that I didn't know, which has worn me out, I didn't know I'd have to sign five or six guys that are good enough to help us win every single year. I think people don't understand how much losses, especially the ones at the end of years, bother you. Because people see you talk about the draft, et cetera, and they think, well, those losses don't bother you. But I know the Wisconsin loss, the UConn loss, even Kansas State last year. That stuff gets to you. I, I, talk a little bit about that, because I don't think people realize how much you remember those tournament endings. I grieve, but I don't grieve long. This job is bigger than just wins and losses and coaching games. And I will say this. This would be an unbelievable situation if I didn't have to coach those damn games. <laughs> I love practice. I love seeing kids get better. I enjoy the game. It's a chess match. I enjoy that we've won such a high percentage of games. I mean, there's no crying on the yacht here. And you are on the yacht. And so, yeah, it takes my breath away for a few days. And that last one will take a, my breath away for probably two weeks. Um, but at the end of the day, we then bounce from that to recruiting to the NBA to helping kids. And then the picture is clear why we're doing this. I will say this. I love winning now. If you're in this profession I'm in, if winning becomes a relief, you need to retire because losing sucks. Winning better, better bring great joy and excitement and to you and your body and your mind because losing is exactly the opposite. Let me ask you about this year's team. I mean, this, is, this seems like, to me, a great group to be around. It seems like a team you're having fun coaching. Is that right? Yeah, we got really good players and we got great depth. And what I need is some guys to separate. Uh, we're starting to scrimmage more. Um, until I got them with the habits and the mindset individually and in groups, there's no reason to start scrimmaging. So now we've begun scrimmaging and going through rotation. So it's these five. Okay, now sub in these. I'll coach those five. Now let's sub in these two. I got those guys. And get a rotation going, which would be game-like. Uh, we're going to have to work on zone with this team. This team should be a good zone team offensively because we shoot it. Who I start early, I may start somebody different in the second half just to see. We're, we're experimenting. We're trying. And, uh, um, but I, I would say our first two teams will play a zone. They're going to play us a lot of zone. we got to be prepared for it. John Wall, I think, was your player that when he was here probably had the most pressure on him from the fans. I mean, they sort of saw him as the savior, the turning the program around. Just from a fan standpoint, Tyler's the person I've now seen getting the most of that. How do you make that to where he doesn't feel the pressure of an entire state 
that I think is, is heading in that direction in terms of the hype with him. Every day talking to these kids, the ups and downs of this, you're never going to be just up here. I need to know when it doesn't go right and you can't make a shot, how are you going to respond now? Because the next game is going to be sold out. People falling out of rafters, they're intense, and that's your next game. That guy's not going to give you a break. He sees blood. How are you going to play now? Um, but what I've seen is if I come back in this gym at 11 o'clock at night off the road and I'm, I'm looking, he's in that gym. Now, he's in there with some other guys, maybe Keldon with them. I mean, the other night I saw Reed in here. I mean, um, Emmanuel's in here all the time. Ashton's starting to pick that up. Um, you get an idea of who's built their own confidence. See that, you know, in the past I've said confidence is demonstrated performance. In other words, go do it in a game. Not in practice, not, that's how you build your confidence. But I've even taken it a step farther. Your confidence is built by your consistency. If you make a shot and shoot two air balls, you, you got no consistency. Don't count on me for your confidence. It doesn't matter what I say. But if you're consistent, you don't have to make every shot, but you're like, Ooh, oh, every time you see a guy when he shoots it, you're thinking that's in, not like, I wonder if he's bank missing this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's who he is. So he has a swagger, a confidence about him, which I really like. Is he better than you thought when you recruited him? Yeah. But so is EJ. So is Keldon. So is Emmanuel. And I even coached Emmanuel. Yeah. So is Ashton. Those kids are all better than I thought they were. Tomorrow night we'll have the rest of my interview with Cal, so we hope you tune in.